Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and a video I think we all need right now. Stocks are down almost 5% in the past month, and it could be just the beginning of a major correction lower. With our portfolio on stock card up 24% so far this year and beating the market by 12%, it's a good time to position in some of those crash-proof stocks that can not only give us the protection we need, but still leave some upside potential. In this video, we'll start by looking at why stocks are falling right now, what's causing that crash, and then how to use that to find crash-proof stocks. I'll then highlight three stocks I'm buying in October, three stocks and sectors beating the market, so make sure you check that out. I'll leave a link to Stock Card in the video description below. Click through and then go to Portfolios in the top menu. You'll find the Bowtie Nation portfolio in this stock pick section. It's free to follow and you'll get email notifications whenever I buy or sell from the list. As a special bonus, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for all you out there in the community. Use the promo code Bowtie Nation, all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. We're getting started, but you know I gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now I am going to leave a clickable chapters list in the description below if you want to jump ahead, but please watch through this first part. Nation, it is just as important, more important in fact, when you're looking for ways to protect your portfolio to understand that why of stocks are falling. That's because traditionally when the stock market drops, the conventional wisdom says run to stocks in the utilities sector, uh, consumer staples, or bonds for safety. Stocks in these sectors have stable cash flows because they sell those needed products like electricity and food. That cash dividend or the interest paid on these stocks and bonds is also a big part of the return and, and that cash flow means that even if prices fall, you still have that positive return on your cash. But that is a dangerous assumption right now. If you look at how these stocks have done over the last month, you see that stocks in the utilities and consumer staples sectors have underperformed the market. In fact, utilities are the worst stocks you could have owned, and bonds haven't done much better. This is the Vanguard Long-Term Bond Fund, the BLV, and while it hasn't fallen as much as stocks, you still would have lost 7 tenths of a percent that month. Nation, you cannot just fall back on these stock market rules, but need to look at why stocks are falling and use that to find those investments that are not only going to protect your money, but also grow your portfolio. So here I want to highlight those three reasons for the recent stock market crash, show you why this is affecting the market, and then I'll reveal the stocks that are helped and hurt the most on each. First is a rise in interest rates, with the 10-year treasury jumping recently to 1.54%, a four-month high, and most expected to reach at least one8 to 2% by the end of the year. Interest rates have been one of the biggest themes this year because low rates make for cheap money, juicing the stock market and the economy. Even on that run to 1.5% though, there is no reason interest rates should be this low, especially when the economy is expected to grow 6% plus this year. I don't want to get into a lecture on economics. Uh, okay, I do want to, but only because I nerd out on this stuff. You probably don't want to get into the economics, so just understand that this is what you need to be watching for stocks this year and over the next. Higher interest rates are going to hit those yield-sensitive stocks the hardest, so stocks and utilities, consumer staples, and even real estate. That's because a good portion of the return on these is from that dividend yield. So. As interest rates rise, those dividend yields look less attractive and investors leave for the safety of bonds. Now, increasing rates are also going to hit tech and growth stocks because just how stocks and future cash flows are valued. And this is what we saw back in the March crash, and it could happen again. The biggest winners to these higher interest rates are going to be stocks in the financial sector. And banks are just going to make more money because loan rates are going to go up, and insurance companies will be able to invest their cash reserves at higher rates. So be watching for stocks in that sector. Another factor pushing stock prices lower is the boom in energy prices, with the price of crude doubling over the last year. Brent crude touched $80 a barrel last week, and a lot of the globe is facing a real energy crisis. Stockpiles of everything from coal to natural gas are touching multi-year lows in Europe, just before that big winter heating surge. And we're seeing a jump in demand from the recovery, and production still hasn't come back, so not only are prices are rising, but we're facing real shortages. Stocks in the energy sector are the most obvious winners here, and in fact, one of the only two groups with positive returns over the last month. A lot of these companies are booking massive cash flows on those higher prices, but not yet ramping up their spending, so look for those bigger dividend increases on these as well. Now, the problem for the market, though, is that while energy stocks are booming, the entire group only makes up about 2.7% of that S&P 500 market index. Now, that means that the drag on the rest 
rest of the economy from those higher oil prices is probably going to play a bigger role. And we're seeing that most in the stocks in the materials and industrial sector. So here, think any manufacturing or other company that is going to be using a lot of oil and gas. Last here, before I reveal those three stocks I'm buying for our October portfolio, investors can no longer ignore the effect of China on U.S. stocks. First, it was the government's crackdown on tech companies that sent stocks like Tencent and Alibaba down 40 and 50%. Now it's the potential bankruptcy of the country's second largest property developer. That company, Evergrande, has missed payments on several of its bonds, and while it still has 30 days before a technical default is declared, this is likely to get worse before it gets better. The property sector is a big part of the Chinese economy, and it's getting smashed right now. Now top this off with an electricity crisis that's slowing down manufacturing, and this could be the factor that pushes the global economy over the ledge. Now we can look at the stock sector performance over the past month to, to get an idea of how all this comes together and where to invest. We see higher interest rates and energy prices have slammed stocks in the utilities sector as well as real estate and consumer staples. Stocks of materials companies and the industrials have also gotten hit on those higher energy costs. On the other hand, energy companies have benefited from that increase in oil prices. Consumer discretionary stocks, so the retailers and other companies making the things that we want to buy are also doing really well as those daily infection rates drop and people just get out to spend those savings. And financials, while they have dropped a little, have still outperformed the rest of the market as those interest rates build a case for the banks. And I still like these three sectors, so that's where I'm going to concentrate our three October stock picks, adding them to the portfolio. The first stock I'm buying for October is Cabot Oil & Gas, ticker COG. I like Cabot for its focus on natural gas production, which is different than you get from most explorers which focus on oil revenue. And natural gas is in full-on crisis mode for supply and demand, especially in Europe and Asia, and the prices are surging. Nat gas futures hit $6 recently, more than double where they were last year, and we're not even in those heaviest winter heating months. Cabot is also one of the lowest cost producers in this space because of where its assets are located. Its wells in the Marcella Shell yield mostly dry gas rather than the liquid heavy wells in other shell plays. Now this means Cabot doesn't have those processing costs that a lot of other explorers do and, and produce a higher return on capital. The company recently agreed to merge with Simerex Energy, ticker XEC, in a deal that could increase cash flow by $5.7 billion through 2024, and that's on that $3 gas price assumption. It could also improve those economies of scale and the company's production profile. Cabot pays a 2% dividend yield, and though the price targets are right around where the shares are trading, I think there's still some upside potential on that natural gas environment. In the consumer space, we're adding Las Vegas Sands, ticker LVS, and this is a really interesting one because of a recent sale agreement. Now, LVS is the world's largest operator in integrated resorts and casinos with sites mostly in Vegas, uh, Macau, and Singapore. The company agreed in March to sell its Las Vegas assets for $6.25 billion, which is going to shift its focus to those international resorts where, where frankly, I think most of the growth exists. Macau traffic is still a fifth of its 2019 levels because of the COVID and, and recent comments out of China drove all these casino stocks lower. Now, that deal alone cuts the company's debt in half and it still has $2 billion in cash for acquisitions and growth. Now it's probably going to take at least another six months for the COVID levels to start really coming down in Asia to see that traffic back up. So, so this is probably a longer term bet, but I think you see some strong growth out of this stock. The average analyst target of $56 is 55% higher, and the shares traded as high as $65 each earlier this year. In the financials, I'm adding $38 billion SVB Financial Group, ticker SIVB, and this is a little different from the other bank stocks in the portfolio. SVB is concentrated in Silicon Valley and acts as a lender and a private bank to these tech and innovative health companies, so it's more of that capital market focus than the commercial banks that we have in the portfolio. like like Wells Fargo and Regions Financial. But that investment banking focus and the tech concentration gives it a kind of a growth stock feel and, and sent client deposits up 67% in the first half alone. Now the stock doesn't pay a dividend, but shares are up 168% in the last year. So definitely that growth potential as banking recovers. One of the best ways to protect your portfolio is by investing in other assets like cryptocurrencies or real estate. I did a video last week with price forecasts and shared my $400,000 crypto portfolio. Click on that video linked in the description below or click on the video to the right for the five stocks that could be the next Apple. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.